Here we'll be looking at how to find the shear capacity of stiffened steel beams. Uh, in previous videos we have looked at how to find the shear capacity of the beams without shear stiffness. Now in this video we'll look at um, finding the shear capacity of the steel beams with shear stiffness. For the steel beams there can be various modes of failures as we discussed before. Um, it can fail in bending by the uh, formation of plastic hinges due to the yielding of uh, steel at maximum moment reason or it can fail by lateral torsional buckling or local buckling of the flanges as well and for shear it can fail in uh, by yielding, uh, yielding of the wave or shear buckling uh, buckling happening in the wave or it can fail in wave crushing as well so this particular video is for finding the capacity of shear buckling with the stiffness. Now the first case that we have already looked into is to find the nominal shear capacity of the wave where um, the wave is relatively thick. Um, in that case the wave will fail by yielding. So the check that AS4100 has given us is um, to see if dp over tw where dp is the clear distance from uh, between the, um, the the flanges like uh, the height of the wave from inside of the flange to the inside of the flange here that is dp dp divided by tw where tw is tw is the width of the wave so if dp over tw is less than this parameter in the right hand side then the failure is governed by shear yielding hence the nominal shear capacity of this kind of beams will be governed by shear ill capacity. So v, v, VU equals to the nominal shear capacity equals to VW where VW is the nominal shear ill capacity. And nominal shear ill capacity is nothing but 0.6 Fy multiplied by AW. Um, now AW is the gross area of the wave where we have, this is the gross area of the wave. So it is nothing but um, AW is nothing but dp multiplied by tw. So that will give us the shear yield capacity for the section where dp over tw satisfies this equation given in 511.2. Now in the case 2 where uh, the depth of the wave is um, relatively bigger compared to the thickness then dp over tw can be greater than uh, 82 over root over Fy over 250. So in that case, as shown in 5.11.5, um, the failure would be governed by shear buckling. So as you can see that for relatively larger depth of the wave, we can have shear buckling like this one. If the thickness of the wave is not um, large enough, there can be some buckling in the wave itself. And to find that shear buckling capacity, uh, we can use this equation as given in 5.11.5. So in this case, where dp over tw is greater than this uh, parameter in the right hand side, then the shear capacity of the beam is governed by the shear buckling capacity Vb. And the shear buckling capacity is given by the parameter alpha V multiplied by the shear yield capacity, which is Vw, which we have found earlier. So the Vw multiplied by alpha V will give us, give us our shear buckling capacity. Now, in this equation, alpha V, as we know, stands for shear buckling coefficient. And shear buckling coefficient is again given in 5.11.5 as shown here. So finding the shear buckling coefficient and multiplying it with the shear yielding capacity will give us the shear buckling capacity for the waves where dp over tw is greater than this parameter. Now, these are for the unstiffened web. These equations are for the unstiffened web. So, if we have stiff, stiffness um, in the web to increase its shear yielding or shear buckling capacity, then how do we find the capacity? That's what we are going to look into in this video. Now, we can have um, shear stiffness to increase its shear yielding or buckling capacity. And if when it is not adequate to take the shear force, then we need to have shear, um, shear stiffness. So the stiffness can be in, uh, in different ways applied on the beam. As you can see here, it can be intermediate transfer shear stiffness, uh, like the, as shown in number three, or it can be the end plates, uh, number two, or it can be load bearing stiffness, 
at the supports or load bearing uh, stiffness where the load is being applied or even the longitudinal st st stiffness as shown here. So if we have the stiffness then we need to find the capacity of these beams with the stiffness as well. So as you can see here in this figure as well these are the stiffness and uh, the parameter that we'll be looking at is the distance between the stiffness which is written as S and again dp is the height of the wave only. So let's look at how to find the uh, capacity of the stiffness with the intermediate stiffness, um, especially with the um, intermediate transfer stiffness. Now for the nominal shear buckling capacity VB for a stiffened wave, uh, it is given in clause 5.11.5.2 and we can see that uh, the the shear buckling capacity of the stiffened wave is given by alpha V, alpha D, alpha F multiplied by VW where VW is your uh, shear yield capacity and these are the parameters that we need to take when the wave is stiffened, we, when, we have, we, when we have stiffness in the wave. Now uh, and this has to be less than the shear yield capacity. So the maximum capacity it can go is up to the shear yield capacity. Uh, but we are taking alpha V, alpha D and alpha F into account. Now alpha V stands for the shear buckling coefficient as before, as what we found before. Uh, and um, the equation for alpha V is given here for the stiffened waves. Um, now if S over DP, where S stands for the distance between the stiffness over DP is between 1 to 3, then we use this equation to find alpha V. And when S over DP is less than 1, we use this equation to find alpha V. Similarly, alpha D stands for the tension field co coefficients for the wave shear buckling. So that will tend to increase your capacity. And alpha F stands for the flange re restraint factor for wave shear buckling as well. So that tends to increase your shear capacity because of the stiffness. So we have alpha D and alpha F parameter trying to improve your shear capacity here. So uh, the clause 5.11.5.2 also gives us the parameter for alpha D and alpha F as well. So as you can see here, alpha D can be found out using this equation from clause 5.11.5.2 or more conservatively it can take in as 1 as well. Here again S is the distance between the transfer stiffness and DP is the depth of the wave or the height of the wave um, and similarly alpha f can be taken as one as conservatively or it can be found out using this equation as well. Now in this equation bf naught is the least of all the following here. So to use this equation we have to find bf naught which is the smallest of all this one. So bf naught is the smallest we find all these three parameters and whichever is smallest that we put as a b naught bf naught and find out alpha f from here. 2. It stands for the distance from the mid plane of the wave to the narrow edge of the flanes. Now what it means is that it's like this. So the distance from the mid plane of the wave, so from the middle of the wave to the narrow edge of the flane. So it is this one. So this is the parameter that we have for number 2 whatever the distance is here um, or it is taken at zero if there is no flange overhang. So if your wave is like this and there is no overhang it will be this will be zero if there is no overhang. And number three is half the clear distance between the wave if there are two or more waves. So, um, so if it is like if your beam is like this then then half the clear distance between the waves if there are two more waves. So half the clear distance between the waves. So that means distance between this one and this one and half of this one, half of this distance is number three parameter. So we find all these three parameters and whichever is smaller, we put it as a BF naught and plug it back into this equation to find alpha F here. And once we find alpha F and alpha D and alpha V we can plug into the equation shown before to find the shear buckling capacity for the waves with shear stiffness. Now the alpha V and alpha D parameter together can also be found out from table 5.11.5.2 as well. So based on this 
parameter you can calculate what is this parameter for your given uh, steel beam and based on that and based on the distance between the wave uh, stiffness and divided by dp you can find the directly alpha v and d from this chart as well or you can use the equations to find it alpha v and alpha d or if i use the table to find alpha v and alpha d together as well so this is how we can find the capacity of um, the steel beam with wave stiffness so um, we have to take into account alpha d and alpha f factors which will tend to increase your shear capacity when we have shear stiffness so now overall um, the flow chart for finding the shear capacity will look like this one so the, this is the design shear capacity phi vu so to find the shear design capacity we have to test whether um, there will be wave yielding failure or whether there will be wave buckling failure so if dp over tw is less than this parameter then we will have wave, wave yielding failure occurring or if dp over tw is greater than this parameter then there will be wave buckling occurring so if wave yielding is occurring then your capacity is governed by vw which is given by 0.6 fyaw that's the shear yield capacity of the beam now if there is a wave buckling occurring then your nominal shear buckling capacity will govern the capacity of your beam and in that case there are two cases again so there can be unstiffened wave if there are no stiffness in the wave then your nominal shear buckling capacity vv is you have to just multiply um, the shear buckling coefficient alpha v multiplied into uh, with the vw parameter which is the shear yield capacity so that will give us shear nominal a shear nominal shear buckling capacity vb now if there are stiffness present if it is a stiffened wave then the shear buckling capacity is obtained by alpha v alpha d and alpha f multiplied by this is still vw now alpha v is again the shear buckling coefficient alpha d is the tension field coefficient for waves shear buckling and alpha f is flange restraint factor for wave shear buckling as well so these are the different scenarios and how to find um, your shear capacity of the steel beam for these scenarios.